This is NBC Nightly News with Jose diaz Ballard. Good evening. It was a terrifying scene at a Miami area nightclub. An altercation led to gunfire, which then turned into a full on shootout with police. Innocent bystanders caught in the crossfire. When the bullets stopped, two people were dead, seven were injured. Victims treated on the sidewalk outside the club. Others rushed to the hospital, including one police officer. There are now two investigations a homicide investigation into the shooting that started it all and an investigation into the officer-involved shooting. Marisa Parra starts us off from Doral, just outside Miami. I want to warn you, some of the images in this story are disturbing. Deadly chaos at 3.30 in the morning inside a Miami-area nightclub, spilling onto the streets. Shots fired at City Place Doral. Nine people shot inside, two of them killed, including the bar's security guard. You start hearing shots. And it wasn't one, it was one after another, after another, after another. Peter Jordan was among those enjoying Doral's Martini Bar, known for its nightlife and one of the few places in the area open till 4 a.m. But this, just 30 minutes before closing. Four to five people shot plus an officer. Police say it started with an altercation. The security guard that was working intervened, and that's when the subject produced a firearm and shot and killed the security guard. Authorities say two Doral police officers then jumped in, exchanging gunfire with the shooter, killing him. One of those officers also catching a bullet in his lower extremity. One of the officers, the one who was struck with four years of service, um, applied a tourniquet on himself immediately after being struck. Six bystanders, five men and a woman, according to police, were shot in the crossfire. You start thinking right after, right? When you're in the floor, you start thinking, is this going to be at the end? This is, I'm going to die here. Victims appearing to be treated outside captured on this graphic video. The injured rushed to area hospitals, one of them in critical condition. You think that it's never going to happen to you in a night where you're having fun, right? You're two feet away. I could be there right now. Marisa Parra joins me now from near the scene of the shooting of the six bystanders shot. Marisa, do we know if any were hit by a gunfire from the police? Jose, it's an important question that many people are asking, and police are saying they don't yet have the answer. And to find out will require a forensic investigation, which authorities say will take time. Jose? Marisa Parra in Doral, thank you. And now to the mad dash to go see Monday's total eclipse. Millions are packing into towns and cities in its path braving traffic, crowded airports, and paying out-of-this-world prices to see it all unfold. Priscilla Thompson has this latest from Dallas along the path of totality. By air and on the roads, towns along the Eclipse Path are bracing for millions of tourists from around the world. I'm really excited. We're excited! Uh, excited, yeah, it's a really <laughs> rare opportunity. All for a chance to catch Monday's rare glimpse of the sun, moon, and earth aligning, plunging parts of the U.S. along the path of totality into total darkness for minutes. It's like Christmas time, so we're ready for it. We're ready for our passengers. A show of hands revealed almost every passenger on board this plane to Arkansas came for the eclipse. And how about this for a path of totality? This map showing Airbnb bookings almost totally sold out from Texas to New England. The same goes for car rentals, and Uber is reporting a nearly 300% increase in pre-booked rides on Monday. We expect a million or more people. And that's going to mean a substantial increase in traffic volume. Officials in Texas are pausing road construction and urging residents to avoid non-essential travel. Some counties in the state even declaring a state of emergency. We don't know what to expect. We've had uh, Texas FEMA come in and talk to us about filling up with gas, getting your bread, your milk, your eggs. Advice they're giving in case people get stuck in traffic like this from the last eclipse in 2017, when congestion in some areas lasted more than 10 hours. A small price to pay, some say, for a once-in-a-generation site that likely won't happen again in the U.S. for another 20 years. Priscilla, we know we shouldn't look directly at the eclipse without those cool glasses, but what about taking a picture of it? 
Yeah, Jose, much like your eyes, pointing your camera lens directly at the sun on your phone can be dangerous. Experts recommend using a filter like a spare pair of Eclipse glasses and placing them over the lens before snapping that perfect shot. Jose? Priscilla Thompson in Dallas, thank you. And let's turn right to meteorologist Bill Karens. Bill, so much focus on the weather the next couple of days. It's all about the clouds, Jose. Millions want to get into the totality, the complete darkness on the middle of the eclipse. Austin still looks very cloudy for a lot of Texas. Dallas, kind of a flip of a coin. At least you have a chance. Little Rock's seeing improving forecast for clearing skies. Looks great. Indianapolis, Cleveland, going to be cloudy all day and then clearing right as the eclipse is about to happen. So fingers crossed for you. Buffalo does not look great for western New York. In northern New England, get ready. All these small New England towns with clear skies, get ready for thousands of people heading your way Monday. Bill Karens, thank you very much. And we will have complete coverage of Monday's total eclipse right here, starting at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on Monday. More aftershocks today following that historic earthquake that hit the Northeast yesterday. It raises new questions about what would happen if it had been bigger. Are cities in the region ready? George Solis reports. Well, we just had another one. Tonight, we just more aftershocks one. from Friday's historic earthquake are raising new questions and seismic concerns. Maybe that was an aftershock. NBC 10 Philadelphia reporter Brian Sheehan was moments away from a live report when his team felt one. Yeah, are you good? Yeah, yeah. In New Jersey, this mom grabbing her daughter as they felt one too. Yeah. Dozens of aftershocks reported since the rare 4.8 magnitude tremor that rattled New York City on this earth cam shot along with the rest of the East Coast. It sounded like an explosion. <laughs> LA native Jared Demel recorded the moments the quake hit near the epicenter in northern New Jersey. Because the last thing on my mind was earthquake. All right, so let's go up and let's go see what we got over here. The NYPD quickly launching drones to inspect the city's iconic and older landmarks like the Brooklyn Bridge. We're looking for any anomalies, any structural deficiencies on our bridges. With as many as 29 aftershocks after the big quake, the question now are major East Coast cities like Boston, Philadelphia, and New York prepare for a big one. According to a city forecast, a big quake could cause injuries and billions in damage. Generally speaking, are the city's buildings designed to handle earthquakes? Generally speaking, yes. So from the 90s onward, all buildings were specifically designed for earthquakes. But the city's buildings have never been truly tested for quakes, and some scientists say they may not be for some time after this one. Just about anywhere in the Northeast could have an earthquake. If we were to see another 4.8 or larger, what could that signify? De absolutely depends on where it is. You put it in the middle of a you know, a Philadelphia or New York or Boston, we're going to be seeing some level of damage. And George, a lot of cities on the East Coast have a lot of older buildings. What would happen to them? Yeah, Jose, here in New York City, they estimate that some 200,000 buildings were built before those earthquake building rules went into effect and would be severely damaged in the event of a major quake. Jose? George Solis in New York, thank you. There has been a stunning break in diplomatic ties between Mexico and Ecuador. That after Ecuadorian police broke into the Mexican embassy in Quito yesterday to arrest a former Ecuadorian official who had been seeking asylum there amid corruption charges. Leaders across the Americas have expressed outrage and Mexico's president announcing he was cutting diplomatic relations with Ecuador. Still ahead tonight, airport safety concerns. Reports of hundreds of people slipping through parts of TSA checkpoints. Air travel has hit an all-time high, and now an alarming new report is raising concerns about safety after hundreds of people slip past part of the TSA screening process. Steve Patterson has details. It is the great inconvenient trade-off of air travel we all agree to. Good morning. Every year, roughly 850 million passengers wade through airport security. The TSA now reporting at least 300 instances of people attempting to bypass a part of airport security since March of last year. More than 200 of those were people trying to enter through the passenger exits. 80 people bypassed the TSA podium where IDs are being checked, but completed the rest of the security screening process. The number of instances, relatively small, but points to something more troubling. Is this a larger problem? 
Yes, I, I, and I believe it's a larger problem because it demonstrates a trend. Former TSA Deputy Administrator John Holinsky says more can be done to harden security exit points from physical barriers to more sophisticated AI cameras, improvements that TSA says would require additional funding. When I saw the number of about 200 breaches of exit lanes, that's something that could be mitigated. It goes back to the equation, where is your vulnerability in the airport? This has now become a vulnerability and you have to pay attention to it. And security breaches can mean massive upheaval, like in San Diego in summer of 2022, when hundreds of passengers had to wait to be rescreened after a man bypassed a baggage screen. The TSA says most of these recent lapses are not considered full security breaches and account for just one in 11 million passengers, most described as inadvertent and unintentional actions. 300 is a very small number, and the thing to keep in mind is that very few made it through to any place where they would likely have been potentially a threat. An ever-present struggle, keeping the sky safe, their security on the ground. Steve Patterson, NBC News. When we come back, there's good news tonight. The wedding surprise that turned a hospital stay into a memory of a lifetime. There's good news tonight. You know, so often the good news doesn't get as much attention as the bad. So every Saturday, we highlight the many people who spread joy and love. These are just some of the stories this week. They say there's no crying in baseball, but they threw out those rules at Texas A&M last week. You see that girl on the right? That's freshman Jamison Harvey. She was working the Aggies game when all of a sudden... That's your dad, U.S. Army Major Rick Harvey, who's been deployed overseas for a year. It was a home run reunion they'll never forget. I'm Michael. Hola, Michael. And talk about heroes. That's California firefighter Michael McShane finally meeting a man whose life he helped save years ago after a terrible accident. Of course. Of course. Thank you, Michael. Yes. Thank you for coming. The man returning to thank him. To know uh, and be reaffirmed that, that there's something out there much bigger than us. Um, oh, it's watching over us. And in Oklahoma, and we're writing a check for $1,940 for school lunch debt. Sean Cummings is on a mission to wipe out the state's school lunch debt, raising money and giving out check after check after check, more than 30 in all since February. Sean honoring his beloved wife, Kathy, who recently passed. She was known for her commitment to community and service. Every time I show up to those schools and I'm walking out after we're finished, I get hit with the slightest bit of grief and then a whole load of happiness. And this was a day of brand new beginnings <laughs> for Jatana and Middleson Silencio, but not one they ever expected. This surprise wedding was organized by staff at Advocate Lutheran General in Park Ridge, Illinois, after the one the couple planned got canceled. That's because Jatana had a heart attack and an emergency C-section to save her baby Grayson's life. The couple telling me why they felt blessed that day. And there was a moment that you were particularly moved when you saw just how much so many people had done for this moment. I don't have words to describe it. It was just so amazing. <laughs> as soon as I, I came around the corner and I seen all of the people that helped save my life and Grayson's life, my emotions just went through the roof. I started crying. With so much bad news that we're always seeing, it's kind of important to underline that there really are a lot of good people doing a lot of good things. Absolutely. Yes. You know, for us to put a little, you know, a little sparkle of hope onto, you know, someone that is having a bad day or going through something bad, that miracles do happen. That's NBC Nightly News for this Saturday. Hallie Jackson begins as the anchor of Nightly News Sunday tomorrow. Hallie is an extraordinary journalist, and I can't think of anyone I'd rather share the weekend with. Please tune in.
I'm Jose Diaz Bolart. Thank you for the privilege of your time and good night. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.